Okay, this is an old subject about the death of Heath Ledger that I've always been very suspicious of and I talked about him periodically in some of my Illuminati videos so I'll leave the link to those below. Now, you all know I like to do a brief intro before we going in, so here we go. Okay, so Heath Ledger was born in Perth Restaurant, Australia, the son of Sally Ledger and French teacher Kim Ledger, a race car driver and mining engineer whose family established and owned the Ledger Engineering Foundry. The Sir Frank Ledger Charitable Trust is named after his great-grandfather. He had English, Irish, and Scottish ancestry. Ledger attended Mary's Mountain Primary School in Gooseberry Hill and later Galford grammar school where he had his first acting experiences believe it or not starring in a school production as Peter Pan yeah <laughs> at age 10 his parents separated when he was about 10 years old and divorced when he was 11 after sitting for early graduation exams at age 17 Ledger left school to pursue an acting career with Trevor DiCarlo, his best friend since he was about three years old, Ledger drove across Australia from Perth to Sydney, returning to Perth to take a small role in a clowning around, which was released in 1992, the first part of a two-part television series, believe it or not, and to work on the TV series Sweat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never even heard of that, believe it or not, in which he played a gay cyclist. <laughs> And then his iconic role playing the Joker. And, well, feel like this. And so on and so forth with that. I'm not going to all that. Let's move on. Now, for anyone who knows Heath Ledger, you should know his many relationships. For example, he dated Lisa Zane, Heather Graham, and Naomi Watts. In 2004, he met the infamous Michelle Williams on the set of Broke back mountain immediately after Michelle was looking to trap him so she became pregnant shortly after and then a year later in 2005 while still in New York they had a daughter named Matilda Rose so a year later in January of 2006 Ledger decided to put his residence in Bronte in New South Wales up for sale and officially moved to the US where he shared a house with Williams and Brooklyn from 2005 to 2006 you see that was a big mistake because later in September 2007 Williams father confirmed to <clears throat> that Ledger and Williams had ended their relationship but as we all know Ledger can move on quickly and he isn't used to being with one woman I mean he was only 27 years old he was in his 20s doing all of this stuff you know what I mean because soon as he broke up with Williams he quickly started dating supermodels why because he had it like that such as Helena Christensen Jimmy Ward moving on he got real close with Jimmy though you know Jimmy Ward because they spent Christmas together in their hometown of Perth but the question is did Michelle have him killed Now, there are so many conspiracies surrounding his death. For example, he's leaked to one of the Olsen twins and his ex-bitter girlfriend, Michelle Williams. And then there's the Illuminati rumors. Well, I'm about to break them all down right now. Okay, prior to Heath's death, he was in the process of filming the role in which he played Joker. It was told that to prepare for the role, Ledger locked himself in a hotel room for about a month and experimented for what will turn out to be one of the most defining negative characters of all time. In an interview in Empire in 2007, he said that he studied and experimented with comic books that was relevant to the script and that he closed his eyes and meditated often. He locked himself in that hotel room in London for about a month. He even formed a little diary and experimented with voices. You see, it was important for him to try and find somewhat of an iconic voice and laugh, but he did state that he ended up landing more of the ram of a psychopath someone with very little to no conscience toward his actions hence many demons as you know the joker is an absolute psychopath and a cold-blooded killer mass murdering clown this is what he is this is what he's captured this is the mindset and demons he allowed to enter him while filming this movie oh it gets deeper because according to Heath's father Keith 
He stated while reading excerpts from Heath's diary for the iconic role, the Joker, Heath took inspiration from hyenas, clowns, comic strips, and Alex Large. I probably mispronounced that, sorry, from a clockwork orange, but was disturbing and a sign of tragedy to come was whereas Heath ends the diary with bye bye scribbled across a page. He died shortly after. But the question is, did he write it? I mean, think about it here. Why would he go from keeping a record of his progress and being so determined to be completely prepared for his role of the Joker character, the scribbling bye bye? But here's the weird part. He also completed another role prior to The Dark Knight, and that was called I'm Not There. Now, these two movies took a toll on his sleeping habits. Now, you all have to remember, or you probably can't recall, Michael Jackson. Remember his This Is It tour, and they released the footage of that? I I have questions about that, but that's another subject. Anyway, yeah, of his rehearsals, whereas Michael Jackson often complained about him not being able to sleep. And of course, it's constant back pain and headaches. I mentioned this because when an actor and or entertainer are doing these roles or performances, their adrenaline level is heightened. And once you're at the height, it's hard to bring it down. This happens to Beyonce, pretty much all of the greats. They're unable to sleep for days while on tour. Some take medication to help them sleep and some just have sex. Hence, Beyonce. (laughs) So it was told that he stated that he was unable to sleep for days. His body was tired, but his mind was still going. He didn't go Beyonce route. He took Ambien pills and and they're known to be very powerful, but they needed time to sink in because he took one and 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 it didn't work. And it left him pretty much awake in one hour. You know what I mean? And his mind was still racing and and the headaches increased, of course. While still not sleeping, he started filming Imaginarium of Dr. Paranassus, Christopher Plummer. Yeah, this movie is by Christopher Plummer. It got released in January of 2008. While filming that, he reportedly complained about his sleeping problems and constant pill popping he was still doing to one of his um, co-stars. Aside from that, he started to not feel well on set. But during the making of that movie, with all the actors and actresses and production team, they all caught colds, you know, coincidentally, because they were shooting outside and the weather was horrible and it was just damp nights all the time. They took antibiotics, but Heath went on and didn't bother to deal with antibiotics or anything of that nature. So Christopher Plummer stated that he had basically walk-in pneumonia And, of course, on top of that, he was reported saying all the time, Damn it, I can't sleep. Not to mention all the pills he kept taking. So, do remember, at this point, he's literally a walking zombie. As I like to call it, because I get like that sometimes. I'm kind of like that right now. You're literally an autopilot, and you are not aware of what's going on. So, they're saying that Heath may have accidentally taken too many pills, and that is what killed him because his toxology report said that he died with the combination of effects of oxycodone and hydrocodone and so on. You can see the list of the pills on the screen. I'm not, I'm not going to read all of that. My gosh, tongue tied for real. Anyway, <laughs> now all of these pills are common medications for insomnia, anxiety, pain, or a common cold symptoms. The vast majority of physicians in the U.S. are extremely reluctant to prescribe benzodiazepine, probably butcher that, <laughs> and countless others, to a single patient, let alone prescribe the same t- to one individual patient that's already taken a mix of oxycodone and hydrocodone. So the question is, where did he get these pills from? Because later in February of 2008, a DEA investigation of medical professionals relating to Ledger's death exonerated two American physicians who practiced in Los Angeles and Houston of any wrongdoing, determining that the doctors in question had prescribed Ledger other medications, but not the pills that killed him. So again, who gave it to him?
Okay, here's where it gets tricky. Because prior to Heath's death, Mary-Kate Olsen, now this is the Olsen twin, who reportedly was rumored to have had an eating problem. But what I found out was she was a pill popper and she had to go to rehab for it. Of course, they denied both. the You know, the eating problem and the drug pill popping problem too. They denied both of them. Anyway, Heath and she were friends. Well, actually, they were a little bit more. She was the last person to have seen him prior to him dying. It was rumored that she was the supplier, and she's the one who gave him some pills and told him to take it and then left and he dozed off. Now, upon being questioned, she denied all claims, of course, with her big top lawyer. I mean, they're practically billionaires. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> they even trying to subpoena Mary Kate but she weaves her way out of that as well but what make this weird and this is basically a simple fact this is a fact that Mary Kate and Ashley are so freaking programmed and so screwed up whereas they came out with this fashion line and within the fashion line they literally created a purse that had a bunch of pills all over it it was like they were mocking him and laughing at him like yeah we killed you and what I mean this is how freaking screwed up these two girls are I mean they ugh, moving on <clears throat> okay it was rumored and it still is a rumor that the Illuminati killed Heath and that he was a sacrifice. I even speculated this on one of my videos. I'll leave the link to that below. It was told that Heath was involved in many satanic rituals and further he got, he started resisting and they had to kill him like many others. They say they killed him also for the popularity and outcome of the movie The Dark Knight. It was told that they had planned this for months. Now, that coincides with the movie titles as well. For example, I'm not there. Heck, that title is self-explanatory. I mean, it's literally a replica of his life. His initiation and deal. That's the role he played. Because next comes the Dark Knight. And that is the formation of the transfer of demons. And he's swimming basically in the dark side and become a psychopath. And then there's the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Well, Parnassus, however you pronounce it. I don't really care, sorry. Well, that's showing us the inside of the brainwashing state. The whole movie is filled with the signs of the occult and things of that nature. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go check it out. It may be even on Netflix. Who knows? I believe all the above. I believe he did, in fact, took some pills, and I also believe that brainwashed Mary Kate gave him something that killed him and then mocked him about it later. Why? Because they're so programmed they can't see and or think straight. They're living walking something. You can fill in the blanks. They sacrificed Heath for the sake of the movie success The Dark Knight because that's where it all started. It's amazing what greed would do. You know what I mean? I mean they this man blood is literally in that movie. And they seem to do this with a lot of people. I mean, um, did this with Robin Williams and shoot Bruce Lee. <laughs> I should do a video about Bruce Lee. I'm a huge fan. Hey, upcoming video. <laughs> anyway, subscribe to my website. You can see my calendar and you'll be able to see the movies that come out. I do change it periodically, so you might want to make a note in your calendar to check like every week because I do change the orders based on my work schedule. Remember, I do have a job. This freaking YouTube crap don't pay me Jack Daniels I'm still bitter about that but I love you all and I love making videos other than that please subscribe and like and speak to you guys all later I love y'all bye
Hey, there's more. Don't forget to check out and sign up for my website. You can get an inside look at unlisted videos and a sneak peek at my upcoming video script. You can also see the making of one of my videos. Mm -hmm. Even have a personal chat with me and much more. So become part of the Truth Show family. There is no fee, just donation. You can help me build and recruit more leaders and open more eyes. Oh, don't forget to follow me and or like me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you want to listen while working out or driving, listen to me on SoundCloud and Spreaker. All the links are below. Hope to see you all soon.